This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Good morning. Welcome to worship here, whether you're joining us here in person or online. We welcome you this morning. Um, I would like to take this opportunity. We are going to um, look at each other in the face and greet one another by saying the words on the front of our bulletin. You are God's child, and you are welcome in this place. So I would encourage you, please keep your masks on, and you can um, get up and say to people, if you feel comfortable, that you are God's child and you are welcome in this place. You are God's child, welcome in this place. I can hear your mask in here, that's great. Thank you. We are each God's children and we are all welcome here and we give thanks to God for that. I want to draw your attention to the one announcement in our bulletins, which as the numbers continue to go up, I feel like a broken record, but sadly it's true. If you would please leave your mask on the entire time um, and cover your nose as well, uh, we would appreciate that and that's how we love our neighbor. Also, in your bulletin is an insert. Our hymn this morning the words are here, not the music, but hopefully you'll catch on to the tune. And on the back, we are having two baptisms today, and today is Baptism of the Lord, Sunday, which is when we look at Jesus' baptism. And so we are going to reaffirm our own baptismal vows, those of us who've been baptized, along with Zoe and Bev as they come to receive the sacrament of baptism. So when that time comes, just look at the back of your insert for the three questions that I will be asking them and you all together. Last but not least, I want to thank everyone on the staff who have been so helpful. We've had a lot of people out sick, um, not on staff per se, but we've had a lot of sickness going on in the community. So please uh, stay as healthy as you can. Prayers for those who are sick. Um, as well as a thanks to our musicians, two of whom could not be here today because they were sick. Um, another a person who had COVID as well. So just uh, prayers for everybody for safety in this time. We want to thank our musicians and our ushers and um, live stream and sound. Thank you all so much for making today's worship service possible. So let us turn our hearts and our minds and our souls over to the worship of our living God. I would like to invite Vernell Austin to lead us in this morning's call to worship. Good morning. Come to the river of life. Come to the waters of grace, to the water of glory. Come to the river of love. For all of us here. Let us worship God. Must be the people that Moses said. 
God's gonna trouble the wall Wait in the water Wait in the water, children Wait in the water God's gonna trouble the wall That yonder dressed in white, wait in the water. Lord, it must be the Israelite. God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water too. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble. Water. Don't think that I've been redeemed Way down the water Just remember what I said God's gonna trouble the water. Wait in the water. Wait in the water, children. Wait in the water. God's gonna trouble the water. Open our ears this morning to hear the story of Jesus Christ's baptism and to celebrate a sister and a brother's baptism. Let's also remember our own baptism. But first, before doing that, let's confess our sins to God in the presence of each other. Beloved, beloved one, one, when, when we, we forget, forget that, that we are, are beloved, beloved children, children Draw us ever closer to you. When we fail to hear your voice of love, whisper your words of reassurance. When we don't reflect the divine image within us, forgive us. Wash over us with your mercy and grace and bathe us in your abundant love that we may remember who we are and whose we are. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Do not fear. God is with us in our baptism. Christ has redeemed us and claims us as God's own forgiven children, named and honored with compassion and love. Amen.
Amen. Before we jump right into today's passages, first, you all know me, a little context. The Israelites were some 500 miles away from their home, Jerusalem, captured by the Babylonians as slaves. The Israelites' home had been destroyed, their homes, their businesses, the temple. Some younger generations of the Jews knew nothing but living under captivity in Babylon. The prophet Isaiah speaks to a downtrodden, lost people. A people who have forgotten who and whose they are. And they are more than likely wondering if God had forgotten them. If God wanted nothing more to do with them. Maybe they also wondered if God had washed God's hands of them and said, not my business, people. You're in a world of mess. Good luck getting out of it. And here it is in this context that the prophet Isaiah speaks a message from God that is instead totally different. We're also going to read from a few verses in Luke's account of Jesus' baptism. Jesus who for us in Luke's gospel goes from being a toddler to all of a sudden a 30-year-old, now beginning his ministry. And he goes to his cousin, John the Baptist, to be baptized by him. So let us now turn to God's word for us today, but first let us pray together. We thank you, God, for promising to be there for our morning cry and for our final sigh and each breath in between. Your care makes life not only possible but also good. So, Lord, listen to your children praying. Lord, send your spirit in this place. Lord, listen to your children praying. Send us love, send us power, send us grace. Amen. A word from the prophet Isaiah, chapter 43, verses 1 through 7. Listen for a word from God. But now, thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned, and the flame shall not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east and from the west. I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up. And to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away and my daughters from the end of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I had created for my glory, whom I formed and made. And now a word from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 3, verses 21 and 22. Continue to listen for God's word. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son. The beloved, with you I am very well pleased. 
This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When I was young and finally learned how to spell my long eight-letter name, I asked my mom in desperation why my two younger siblings were named after family members and I was not. I mean, after all, I was the oldest. My mom told me, actually, that they were going to name me Erin Marie. And at the very last minute, they changed it to Jennifer Elaine. You see, my name, Jennifer, I can almost pinpoint when people were born, when women had the same name. For you see, Jennifer was a very popular name back in the day. And to this day, I rarely turn around when I hear my name said in public. Too many folks share my name. Some of you may have been named after movie stars or family or friends, while others' names may have been drawn from a hat or taken from a book. Some of us like our names, and some of us do not. However, regardless, we are identified by our names, amen? Some of you have nicknames or street names. Others of you may have been adopted and may not know the origin of your name. Some of us would like to change our names or maybe have to try and escape the pain and the shame from our past. Here today, both In the words of the prophet Isaiah and in the Gospel of Luke, a claiming and a naming take place. Say it with me, claiming and naming. A promise that God makes that says we belong to God. This is our true identity as children of God, amen? This is the promise that we are reminded every time there is a baptism. Here in Isaiah, we go from God saying, I will be with you, which is the most central of all biblical promises, to Luke's gospel revealing God in the flesh, Emmanuel, which means God with us in the person of his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus here is being baptized as a kickoff to his ministry. Now, why would Jesus be baptized? Why would he need to be baptized? This is the long-debated question. Jesus didn't need to repent from his sins because he was without sin. Yet Jesus' baptism shows us that he identifies with us as sinners. Jesus identifies with you and me. His baptism symbolizes our dying with Christ and rising free from sin, able to walk in the newness of life. Jesus' baptism, you see, marked the beginning of his ministry on earth. But right after his baptism, we are told that Jesus is tempted by who? By Satan in the wilderness for 40 days. His identity was challenged and mocked. If you are the son of God, then... Friends, just because we are baptized, that doesn't mean we won't go through hard times or that we no longer sin or that evil and temptations will no longer have power over us. You see, this Christian journey is a process. For us, our baptism reminds us that we are beloved children of God. And we renounce anything or anyone who says otherwise. Theologian Rachel Held Evans puts it this way, quote, Baptism is a renunciation of all those competing voices that try to tell us who we are. The world gives us names according to the color of our skin, or who our parents are or aren't, or where we went to school or didn't go, or how much money we make or don't make, or where we are from or not from. Names such as screw up, cheater, fake, addict, 
loser. The world beckons with these other names, but in baptism, just like Jesus, we are named beloved, child of God. And my friends, that is enough. There is no, well, we'll be children of God when... We'll be children of God when we get our stuff together. There's another word for that. We'll be children of God when we get married and have children. We'll be children of God when we stop mistreating our neighbors. We'll be children of God when we beat the addiction. We'll be children of God when we stop having doubts. Friends, by God's grace, we are children of God right now. Right now. Baptism marks us, identifies us for the beginning of our faith journey that is a process. It marks us not just for the end. In baptism, we die with Christ. We die to our old ways of life. We try. And we are raised with Christ to a new way of living, to change how we treat others and ourselves to change the way we live and give of ourselves. Not just once a year, but every day of the year. Amen? One scholar puts it this way, quote, Baptism declares that God is in the business of bringing dead things back to life, including those places in our own hearts, because that's where God works. That's where God gardens and pours out grace. In our hearts. You see, baptism reminds us that there, there's no ladder to holiness to climb, no self-improvement plan to follow. It's just death and resurrection over and over again, day after day, as God reaches down into our deepest graves and with the same power that raised Jesus from the dead, God rests us from our pride our apathy, our fear, our anxiety, our prejudice, our anger, our hurt, and our despair. Yet upon our deaths, friends, here on earth, our baptisms will be complete. This week my friend was having prayer and a conversation with her loved one as he was transitioning from this life into death. He had lived a very long and full life, yet he was afraid, and he was vulnerable enough to share this with my friend who is a pastor, and he asked her how she knew that he was loved and redeemed by God. My friend told him that she knew it because he was baptized. She said, when you're afraid, I want you to remember your baptism." Remember that God loves you, claims you, names you, and redeems you. Because in life and in death, we belong to God. He died later that day. The image of the opening verses of Isaiah 43 are of a God who redeems what and who God has created. With Christ, Paul tells us in Romans that death nor evil has the final word. For you see, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. Not bad names, not anxiety, not depression, not addiction, not mental illness, not even death. Herein lies the hope of the gospel, my friends. God's grace is present and real. God's promise holds true. But we need to be reminded. Amen? For death is not the end. Out of death comes life, abundant new life. And in baptism, each of us is called to ministry in Christ's name. Each one of us. So we can't use the excuse that we're not worthy because we are beloved, beloved. God tells us so through Jesus. And yes, I'm talking to each one of you. 
But unfortunately, sometimes we do forget or we don't believe who and whose we are or we hang on to those names that do not define us as children of God. We define ourselves by our circumstances alone. We begin to believe these definitions. But friends, just as the exiles, the Israelites, just as they are where they are, Isaiah speaks to them, even though they viewed themselves maybe as despised slaves, just like some of us might feel unlovable, unworthy of God's love and forgiveness. Yet here in the silence of exile and despair is broken by the voice of the one who alone reverses the Israelites' fortune, the one who created them, us, the one who formed them and us. Isaiah writes of God's words to them and to us, because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. Isaiah calls on the people in exile not to fear, for God has redeemed them, no matter their past. God has called them by name. They are loved and chosen by God. They are God's just as we are. Amen? Isaiah doesn't say, notice, God will form you, but rather that God has already formed you. Isaiah doesn't say that God will redeem you when you do such and such, but that God has redeemed you. He doesn't say you will one day be God's when you fill in the blank. Isaiah says that you are already God's. Amen? And Luke tells us of God's spirit coming down in the form of a dove and saying to Jesus, you are my beloved son. In you I am well pleased. Now some of us may hear these words as trite or cliche. Come on, preach. Give it to us. Really? I understand that. And I also invite you to hear it as maybe trite and true. For in hearing God's word spoken to our ancestors in faith, our own lives become open to these promises that are as valid today as they were back in the biblical times. So ask yourself, if you have really, truly received God's love and grace in your own life, it's one thing to read or hear these words and nod your head or even say amen with the preacher, but how can you really say that you have taken in God's grace and love and lived it as if it were true? What would it look like to receive God's grace and love and live as God's beloved in whom God is well pleased? A woman tells the story of her friend Jeremy, who also is known as Twitch on the streets. Twitch was the name he had been called when he was in and out of jail before he got clean. The woman said she would call him Jeremy, thinking he wouldn't want to be called the name associated with his past. But he then said the most extraordinary thing to her. He said that he wanted for people to keep calling him Twitch so that it would be clear to those who had known him before, that he was a transformed child of God. He was afraid that if he started going by Jeremy, people might not realize that he was the same twitch who had been in jail with them, who used with them, who probably cursed God's name with them. He wants them to recognize him and to take heart that God can redeem and transform their lives as well. God's grace and love knows no bounds, my friends. Grace, if you need a reminder, 
is when God is a source of wholeness, which makes up for our failings. It's God saying, I love the world too much to let your sin define you and be the final word. I am the God who makes all things new. When Jesus is baptized by his cousin John, the heavens open up, God descends down like a dove, and a claim is made. A claim that we cannot earn by what we do. A claim that we cannot earn by who we are. A claim that we cannot earn by what we believe. For when the heavens opened up, a naming also occurred, Beloved. Just as God called Jesus Beloved when he came out up of the water, we too are named as God's Beloved. You see, that's our first name, Beloved. Now, if we could only receive God's name for us, believe we are Beloved. That will be enough. So, beloved, here's a simple truth of the Christian faith. God made us in God's image. God made us good. And God loves us. We do not have to earn God's love. In obedient response to that love, we're asked to love God and others. Yes, we made mistakes. We will make them. Or maybe we just feel unworthy. However, when we accept Christ's forgiveness and love, the enemy within, we live freely in the grace and mercy of God. That's right, I'm talking to you, beloved. So by God's grace, let us all try our best to live out this promise, to claim it for ourselves, and to share it with others. Even in the deepest, darkest waters, we are God's beloved. Thanks be to God. Amen. We've gathered here today to worship the God who knows each one of us by name, the one who walks with us in intimate love. We come as well to reaffirm the blessing that we've received through our baptism and to celebrate the baptism of a sister and a brother. And yes, we've come to offer ourselves and our financial gifts so that Triune will be able to continue to share God's love with others. May our giving be a reflection of our love for God. shall cross the barren desert, but you shall not die of thirst. You shall wander far from safety, though you do not know the way. You shall speak the words in foreign lands, and all will understand. You shall see the face of God in men. Be not afraid. I go before you all Come, follow me. And I
you shall not drown if you walk amid the burning flame you shall not be harmed you stand before the power of hell and death is at your side know that I am with you through it all be not afraid like go before you always come And I will give you rest. Blessed are your poor, the kingdom shall be there. Blessed are you who weep and mourn, one day you shall. Blessed, blessed are you. Be not afraid. Thy go before you always. Come, follow me, and I will give you rest. Be not afraid. I go before you always, come follow me, and I will give you rest. Gracious God, we come today with joy as we remember your son's baptism and as we remember our own baptism too. We come with praise for your glory and we come with gratitude for your love. As we offer these gifts to you, send your spirit upon us that our hands and our hearts may do your work in the world. As we offer our lives to you, bless us with your strength that we may join with you to work for peace and justice throughout the world. Amen. You can come on up and just stand right up here beside me. Hi, Zoe. Hi. All right. Hello, Jody. And Deb, you just want to stand right here. All right. Hear these words of our Lord Jesus Christ. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, there, go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And remember, I am with you always.
to the end of the age. Baptism is a visible sign of an invisible grace. It's a sign of God's gracious initiative on our behalf. Baptism proclaims the freely given gift of salvation in Jesus Christ, in whom the Lord of God has been poured out for all people. A love that overcomes our sin washes away our shame and conquers death. By water and the Spirit, we are bound together as members of the body of Christ and called to participate and to work with Christ in the world. Today, Zoe and Beverly want to join Triune along with Zoe's mom, Jody. Jody is already baptized, but Zoe and Beverly come before us today to receive the sacrament of baptism. And because today is Baptism of the Lord Sunday, I thought it would be great if we all remembered our own baptisms by answering the three questions with Zoe and with Bev. So if you would join me on the back of your insert there, those who have been baptized, Zoe and Beverly and the baptized people of Triune, which commandment is the greatest of all? You, you shall, shall love the Lord, the Lord your God, God with all your heart, heart mind, soul, soul, and, and you, you shall, shall love your neighbor, neighbor as yourself. yourself. Do you renounce the ways of sin, the things that separate you from the love of God? We, we renounce, renounce them. them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ and accept him as Lord and Savior, your Lord and Savior? We do. Pray with me, please. Eternal God, we give you all thanks and praise for you nourish and sustain all living things by the gift of water. God, send us your spirit to move over this water so that it may be a fountain of deliverance and rebirth. May Zoe and Beverly, who now pass through these waters, know that you're always with them. And may they be delivered from death to life, from bondage to freedom, from sin to righteousness. To you, God, be all praise, honor, and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who, with and the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns forever. Amen. Amen. Zoe and Beverly, for you, Jesus Christ came into this world. For you, he suffered and did battle. For you, he went through the agony of Gethsemane in the darkness of Calvary. For you, he cried, it is fulfilled. For you, he was triumphant over death. For you, for y'all. As we have been confirmed by the word of God and the apostle confirms in the apostle's word from God, we love because God first loved us. Zoe Rova, I baptize you in the name of the Father, mm -hmm. and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are marked as a child of God forever. forever. Beverly Allen Wilson, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You are now marked as God's own, God's child forever. Beloved Zoe and Beverly, children of the covenant, beloved, right? 
Yep. God has sealed you by the Holy Spirit in your baptism and marks you as Christ's own forever. May you know that you are beloved always. Look at what God and God's love has done for God's children. Would you join me in not only welcoming Zoe and Beverly, but also Jody to Triune Mercy Center, to this community of faith. Welcome. Welcome. Let's pray together. Dear God, thank you. Thank you for loving us and calling us your children. We celebrate. We celebrate and welcome Zoe and Beverly and Zoe's mom, jo Jody. We welcome them into this body of believers, into your family. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, if you will continue in our time of prayer, starting with a moment of silence. Lord, make us an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O oh, loving God, grant that we may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive. It is in pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in dying that we are born to eternal life. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Beloved, the prophet Isaiah says to do not be afraid, for God has redeemed you. God has called you by name. You belong to God. In life and in death, we belong to God. And God names <coughs> us all beloved. So let us go out and live it as if we believe the promise to be true. For it is. Will you join me? And now, may the love of God, the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each and every one of you, now and forever, world without end. Amen.
Thank you.